Welcome to the University of Michigan Dentistry Podcast Series, promoting oral health care worldwide. We all think about the health of our bodies, but do we think about the health of our teeth and gums? A healthy tooth is glistening white. The outer layer, the enamel, is hard and continuous. No openings or discolorations are visible. The tissue that surrounds the teeth, the gums, is normally a pale pink color in light complexion people. In dark complexion people, dark pigmentation may be present. The tissue immediately surrounding the tooth should not be darker than the adjacent soft tissue. Ideally, the space between the teeth is filled with firm gum tissue which is contoured in a scallop line to follow the shapes of the teeth. However, the scallops may be receded or not present in some adults. In these cases, the tissue may still be considered healthy if it is firm, pink, and does not readily bleed. The gums are normally firm and tightly bound to the teeth and underlying bone. When healthy tissue is probed with a dental instrument or brushed with a toothbrush, no bleeding should occur. Defective teeth or lost teeth may reduce the patient's ability to chew and may interfere with the natural cleansing of the teeth. A decayed tooth may be discolored. It can be uncomfortable or it can be lost if it is not properly restored. Problems with the gums may initially appear as a slight redness in the tissue which immediately surrounds the tooth. For example, the gums of this patient are redder close to the teeth. When brushed or probed with a dental instrument, this tissue may bleed slightly. If nothing is done to treat the tissue, it will continue to become more inflamed, red, spongy, and swollen. It may even bleed easily. In a moment, you will be asked to examine your own teeth and gums for signs of health or disease. Remember, healthy teeth should be white and have a continuous surface. Healthy gums have a pink color, possibly with pigmentation that is not darker near the tooth, a scalloped appearance, ideally, and no bleeding tendency when brushed or probed. Now, look at your own teeth and gums. Examine your six upper and six lower teeth and the tissue surrounding them. Answer the questions on the checklist that relate to the self-examination of the teeth and gums. Then, discuss your responses with your dentist or dental hygienist. Redness, bleeding, and changes in the contour of the gums are signs of present or past disease of the gums, which is called periodontal disease. Periodontal disease is caused by bacteria. Actually, there are millions of bacteria constantly forming on the teeth and in the oral cavity. These bacteria combine with components of the saliva and decompose food particles to form what is called plaque. Plaque is first present as a thin film on the teeth. If the teeth are not regularly cleaned with a toothbrush and dental floss, plaque accumulates as gel-like masses on the surfaces of the teeth where the teeth are not self-cleansing. Calcium salts from the saliva deposit into the plaque as it is formed. The result is the accumulation of hard deposits on the teeth. We call these deposits calculus. Now let's discuss and observe the progression of periodontal disease. Here you can see healthy tooth and gums. The root of the tooth is supported by bone and gums. Notice the normal level of the attachment of the gums to the teeth. 
notice the normal level of the bone that surrounds the teeth. Accumulations of bacterial plaque and of calculus close to the gums are shown in this diagram. The gums respond to the presence of bacteria and their byproducts by becoming inflamed and swelling may be present. As periodontal disease progresses, the attachment of the tissue to the tooth moves towards the end of the root. There may be a slight loss of the bone which supports the teeth. If periodontal disease is not arrested, the bone which supports the tooth is gradually destroyed. The tooth may become loose and eventually may be lost. Plaque is also the cause of tooth decay. On a tooth surface, bacteria reacts with sugar, acids are released, and tooth decay results from the action of the acids on the enamel. Gum disease and tooth decay can be minimized if plaque is removed regularly from the teeth. This should be done daily with a soft bristled toothbrush and dental floss. Regular visits to a dentist are also essential for appropriate diagnosis and treatment of specific problems. Before continuing, be sure that you can answer the following questions. What is the major cause of tooth decay and of periodontal disease? The answer is plaque containing bacteria and its byproducts. The second question is describe plaque including its appearance and its composition. Plaque is a gel-like substance which forms on the teeth. It is composed almost entirely of bacteria and bacterial byproducts. The third question, what can you do to help prevent gum disease or periodontal disease? You can remove plaque daily with a soft bristled toothbrush and dental floss. Regular visits to the dentist are also essential. Plaque is difficult to see on a tooth. However, it can be removed from the tooth and readily seen against a dark background. Plaque can be seen and located on the tooth if it is colored or disclosed. The color of the disclosing solution is retained by a tooth surface coated with plaque. For example, plaque is present here on the incisors close to the gums and between the teeth. But the cleaner the surface, the less color will be apparent. Notice that a small amount of color is visible on the areas between the teeth. This is the solution used to color the plaque. The procedure for identifying plaque with a disclosing solution follows. Swish the solution around in your mouth. Be sure to circulate the solution on all of the teeth. Empty your mouth, rinse your mouth with water, and examine your teeth and gums. A flock light which has a light and a magnified mirror will enable you to see the plaque more effectively. Notice where the red is clinging to the two surfaces. These are areas of plaque that are stained. Check close to the gums, between the teeth, on the front surfaces, the back surfaces, and the chewing surfaces. Notice the difference in the amount of plaque in the different areas. Now examine your own teeth for plaque using the method just described. You will be given a chart of the teeth. Color the teeth on the chart where stained plaque is visible in your mouth. Here are some examples of plaque stained teeth and the corresponding charting. At this time, record the presence of plaque on the outer surfaces of your four upper front teeth and the inner surfaces of your four lower front teeth. 
Normally, you would examine your entire mouth. Discuss your observations with your dentist or dental hygienist. A soft bristled toothbrush is used to remove bacterial plaque from the outer, inner, and chewing surfaces of the teeth. This brush will remove the plaque without injuring the tissue. Notice the brush handle is designed so that it can be easily rotated. This feature enables you to adapt the brush to all areas of the mouth. It should be held firmly and securely. We'll demonstrate an effective technique of brushing on the front teeth without the use of toothpaste. After this, you will be shown a system for brushing the entire mouth. Now, place the length of the toothbrush head across the teeth at the gum line with the bristle tips against the tooth and gums. Only one row of bristles should be against the gums. Move the brush by forming very small circles using a gentle vibration or scrubbing motion. Be sure to clean the areas near the gum line. Now we'll use this motion to brush all the teeth. It is important that you do use a system in order to ensure routine cleaning of all of the teeth. The following system is suggested. Start on the outside of the last two to three teeth on the upper right. Move the brush in the scrub motion shown about 10 times. Bring the brush forward to clean the next two to three teeth the same way. Turn the brush when you reach the two front teeth so the head of the brush is directed towards the left side of the mouth. Move the brush in the same fashion until you reach the last tooth on the upper left. Rotate the brush. Don't forget to clean behind the last tooth by bringing the brush handle towards the opposite side of the mouth. When cleaning the inside surfaces, be sure that all of the bristles are against the teeth and gums or parallel to them. This will ensure a thorough brushing. When you reach the area where your mouth curves, usually at the canine, hold the brush vertically and make several back and forth strokes over the gum tissue and teeth. Finish the insides of the upper and drop down to the outside of the lower right teeth. This system of brushing is illustrated on the graphic shown here. The outer and inner surfaces of the lower teeth are brushed in the same motion and system as the upper. When you have completed those areas, brush the chewing surfaces by moving the brush in a vibrating motion. Now try brushing your own teeth. Remember, place the brush tips on the enamel and gum line. Brush each tooth with a circular scrub motion. Scrub each tooth about 10 times. Proceed systematically around the mouth. You cannot reach all the surfaces between the teeth with a brush, yet these surfaces are important because this is where tooth decay and gum disease often develop. Dental floss is used to remove the plaque in these areas. Now break off about 18 inches of floss and wind most of it lightly around one of the joints of one of your middle fingers. The free end of the floss should be overlapped. Wind the rest around the middle finger of the opposite hand. This finger can take up the floss as it becomes soiled. When the thumbs can be touched with hands upright, you have the correct working length. While the ends are still wrapped around the middle fingers, the floss is held between the right thumb and the left forefinger. You can clean the upper right teeth with the fingers in this position. The distance between the thumb and finger should be about one half to one in inch in length. For the upper left teeth, use the left thumb and the right forefinger. On the lower teeth, use both forefingers. 
First, insert the floss between two teeth. Hold the floss tightly and gently move the floss between the teeth. Form a U shape against one tooth as shown here. Slide it into the space between the gums and the tooth until you feel resistance. Don't snap the gum line. Then clean the tooth surface, hold the floss tightly against the tooth and move it up and down, sliding it against the side of the tooth. Then clean the opposing surface of the adjacent tooth. Bring the floss towards the chewing surface of the first tooth until it is above the soft tissue separating the teeth. Now fold the floss against the, this tooth. Avoid pinching the gum tissue between the teeth. Repeat the up and down motion on this tooth surface. Repeat these motions for all the upper and lower teeth. Again, a systematic method of flossing will ensure routine cleaning of all of the teeth. At the conclusion of this instruction, you will have an opportunity to practice removing the plaque remaining on your teeth with the dental floss. Remember, place the floss around the tooth in a U shape. Move it up and down on the tooth surface. Do the same on the adjacent tooth surface. Proceed systematically around the mouth. Oral hygiene plays a major role in attaining oral health. The relatively small amount of time and effort may pay great dividends. By keeping your teeth clean, you will benefit in the following ways. You'll have better oral health, retain your natural appearance, enjoy chewing and talking, and you may need much less dental care. Finally, it will help prevent bad breath. After you have brushed and flossed your teeth, redisclose and examine your teeth for residual areas of retained plaque. Record whether or not all plaque has been removed on the plaque removal record provided. Note the exact location of any plaque that you did not remove. Repeat the sequence that is brushing, flossing, disclosing, and evaluation. Try to adapt your brush as much as possible to the two surfaces where plaque is retained. Use floss between the teeth where it is difficult to adapt the brush. Continue until all the stained plaque has been removed. If you have not removed all the plaque after three trials, ask your dentist or hygienist for help. Have them confirm your success when you have removed all of the stained plaque. You've been listening to a presentation from the University of Michigan School of Dentistry, which is dedicated to supporting open learning and open educational resources. This recording is licensed under the Creative Commons. It may be reused and redistributed for nonprofit use. Please attribute materials to the University of Michigan School of Dentistry and redistribute under this same license. For more information on how this and other University of Michigan School of Dentistry recordings may be used, visit www.dent.umich.edu/license.